Hey everybody, welcome to the coffee table for the preamble. Today we're going to be talking about the installation of a couple of dirt cheap gauges in my first gen Cummins. The first of these is a boost gauge and an EGT or pyro. Uh, the boost gauge has actually been installed and working properly for a few months now. It really just consists of an $8 Amazon gauge, some PVC tubing, a couple of fittings, and a gauge housing that I 3D printed myself. But as you can see, there are plenty of inexpensive gauge housings online if you don't have the capabilities uh, of 3D printing like I do. Secondly is the EGT gauge. And now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. At the heart of it is this, I think, $6 uh, Type-K thermocouple display that I picked up on eBay. Now, unfortunately, the thermocouple that it comes with looks like this, and it's not going to work for a few reasons. First, there are no sealing threads. These are only regular M6 threads. Second, the, sh the, the sheathing definitely does not have a high enough temperature rating. And third, it's not long enough. You actually need to use a special type of thermocouple extension wire to, if you need to extend a thermocouple. In fact, I don't even like the fact that I that this has crimp fittings on it from the factory. So I'm not gonna be using the least expensive way to do this um, because I already have this high quality Omega thermocouple here. Um, I'll put a link though to a thermocouple that I'd recommend you use that already has the NPT threads built in. For me, in order to get this sealing in the exhaust manifold, I'm going to be using this swage lock uh, tube, tube compression fitting to 8th inch NPT adapter. And the last thing I got to mention here, guys, is that this is not designed to be a replacement for a high quality set of gauges. For me, I'm only modifying my truck uh, very mildly. I'm not really going to be pushing any boost pressures that are risking damaging the engine. I'm not really towing heavy enough to have to worry about EGTs at this point. So for me, this is just a relative indication, you know, before and after mods, for example. But if you need accurate indication, spend the money, get the high quality, proper set of gauges. All right, out to the dodge. Okay, so let's talk about the boost gauge here real quick. Uh, we're under underneath the hood of the dodge. So right there, we've got a eighth inch MPT to eighth inch uh, tube fitting and just the cheapest grade PVC hose you can find here. I'm sure it'll crack uh, and harden up later on but for now it's all good. Going into the cab. Okay so we're here in the cab now and you can see the little boost gauge housing that I 3D printed uh, along with the 30 PSI gauge and then just uh, sheathed the PVC tubing and a bit of TechFlex to make it look nice. Other than that, it's honestly been working great. It doesn't uh, really flutter very much and uh, I've been really happy with it. Of course, I can't see the boost pressure at night, but I couldn't see it at night before either. So in my eyes, for an $8 Amazon gauge, it's still a big win. All right, so we're out here under the hood of the Dodge. Um, the wiring for this EGT gauge is gonna be super simple. It's really just a positive and negative. So I'm gonna ground it to my little aluminum bus bar here. And uh, this is a battery fuse box. This is a switched fuse box. So I'm just gonna hook it up to the ignition switched uh, fuse box and we're gonna be good to go. All right, we've got the wiring buttoned up. Everything's working, no problems at all. Next, it's time to move across the engine bay to look at drilling and tapping the exhaust manifold. Okay, so we're here at the exhaust manifold. The truck's been running, so I'm not too eager to touch anything here. As you know, we've got the center divider. Um, I'm gonna be putting my EGT probe on the rear of the engine. The internet seems to tell me that the rear of the engine runs hotter than the front, so that's what we're going to do. Going to center punch the hole and then drill a couple different uh, increasing sizes to get to our 2164, which is pretty close to the proper size for an eighth inch NPT tab. Okay, so I'm going to be using the grease method to try and catch all my drill chips. Honestly, the only real proper way to do this is take the turbo off, but 
being that this is the old factory H1C, I'm not too concerned about it. made a bit of a mistake here I came to the realization that my tap wrench set is not here at home with me so as a result what we've got rigged up here is our eighth inch NPT tap going into the bottom end quarter inch drive of a 12 millimeter socket which is on the head the head end which is on the 3 8 socket which just fits nice Please use the proper tools for the job. Don't be like me. Next, we're going to set the height of the thermocouple. And to do that, huh? I actually ended up having to drill out the ID of the NPT side of that swage lock fitting. Of course, this is rated for something like five or ten thousand psi, which is why they needed that thickness. But I don't. So, so to measure to set the depth of the thermocouple. I'm going to make a mark there, and that tells me the thermocouple at its deepest point. I'm going to make a mark just a little bit above here. It's going to tell me. It's going to tell me the depth of the. The shallowest point, and then we're gonna go right in the middle. Let me just make a mark all the way. Okay, so the cap is gonna sit right on that line, right in between here and there. Okay, as you can see here, we've got the thermocouple installed. All the extras just coiled up behind. And now we just have to run the cable up to the dash. So for me, because I've got a two-wheel drive truck, um, I decided that my EGT gauge is going to sit right up in here. Now, obviously that's not going to work that well if you've got a 4 by. So then what I probably would recommend is somehow just tucking it up nice in this area. Uh, be pretty easy to make make a mount through this uh, hole that everyone seems to have here. Okay guys, just want to go over the arrangement here. Um, I've got this 3D printed panel, which is just to cover the space in between underneath the gauge in, in that whole area there. Uh, as you can see, we've got 700 max. Uh, that's because unfortunately, Type-K thermocouple protocol is by default in uh, degrees Celsius. So that's what we're going to have for now, much as it sucks, but it'll be all right. And again, I've just got this little toggle switch here wired up real simple, uh, just if, in case I need to turn off this display for night driving. All right, so we got the thermocouple ran up to the dash here. You know, it looks all right. I shouldn't have made the 700 so big, and it doesn't quite fit as well as I would have liked. I think if I would have spent just a bit more time, I could have get it looking could have got it looking really nice. But here you're gonna ride along for the first start. Okay, that's a pretty good sign. definitely 
overexposes it compared to what it looks like in real life. But that's all right. You can see we got our tack working here. It's been running beautifully for a few months now. Boost gauge sitting right here. All right, we'll check in on the drive. Okay, this road's a little windy, so we're not gonna be able to get some sustained heat load in the engine, but it should be okay. For 700 max it got to 790 pretty darn quick so either we've got an accuracy issue or she's a bit of a hot runner I've got the fuel pin or sorry fuel screw turned up two and a half turns uh, I've got a fuel pin in it 3200 guff spring uh, still have the timing spacer to install but as you can see right now, we're pushing about 24 pounds of boost. And she pops right up to 700 real quick. All right, guys, we're back in town. Hope you enjoyed the video. We got to see a little bit of the boost gauge. A little more on how we got to installing that EGT gauge, so. You know, it's a pretty low cost option. Probably not as good as, definitely not as good as some real gauges, but I'm pretty pleased so far and I think she's gonna do the trick for me.